Welcome back to another video from your friends here at Altitude University. I'm Chiron, and today we're gonna to go over the basics of ISO and why it's important to never raise it if possible. Before we begin, please subscribe to our channel so we can continue to provide you with more drone-related content. So let's start with the basics. What exactly is ISO? ISO controls the sensitivity of your camera's sensor to light. In your drone's manual camera settings, you'll have the ability to adjust the ISO, allowing you to either brighten or darken your image. When you increase the ISO, your camera's sensor becomes more sensitive to light, which brightens your image, whereas lowering the ISO makes your sensor less sensitive, resulting in a darker image. But as with most things in photography, there's a trade-off. You might be thinking, why wouldn't you just always crank up the ISO of your footage to brighten it? Here's where the trade-off comes in. Increasing your ISO too much adds what's called noise or grain to your image, which can really degrade the quality of your footage. With drones, this grainy effect is particularly noticeable because drone cameras often have smaller sensors than traditional cameras, meaning they'll be more sensitive to high ISO settings. So ideally, you want to keep the ISO as low as possible to maintain the best image quality. Let's hop into the field to show an example of how this works. All right, guys, so now we're in the field. As you can see, I have the drone up in the air. We're going to be going over how ISO works with my DJI Air 2S. So as you can see, currently the ISO and shutter settings are both set to auto and the exposure looks good. Everything is balanced, but if we really want to get good results, we're going to want to set these to manual mode. As you can see, we still have good results now. The exposure is balanced and our ISO is set to 100 with our shutter at 1 50th, which is what we want. This is doable because we have an ND filter currently on the drone. So to demonstrate what ISO does, we can change it in the settings right here. If we change it up to 400, you can see everything gets a lot brighter. It's now very overexposed. We can even do a little bit more. We can go up to all the way to 1600 actually, which is clearly extremely overexposed. Um, but this just shows how ISO actually adjusts the exposure in your image. You generally, as I said earlier, want to keep the ISO as low as you possibly can because this will just lead to a cleaner image with less grain. And we can see that here. Now I'm going to artificially make the shot darker by increasing the shutter speed, as you can see here, to increase our ISO to 1600 to show you the effects of high ISO on your image. So now you can see the shot is once again properly exposed. However, as you'll see from this shot, the footage is a lot grainier now from the high ISO. Overall, it's always better to try and keep your ISO as low as possible. As you can see, like I said earlier, the ISO that is lowest on this drone is 100, which is gonna be usual for most drones. Um, so you wanna put an ND filter on there, adjust your aperture if you can, and get the ISO down to 100 or as low as you can to get the best results. So that's the basics of ISO and how to use it for drone photography and videography. To sum it up, keep ISO low to avoid noise, adjust only if needed, and balance it with shutter speed, aperture, and ND filters to get the best exposure. Speaking of those, we're gonna be diving further into them in future drone photography basics videos, so stay tuned for those. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more drone tips. And let us know in the comments, what's the biggest challenge you faced when shooting with your drone? We'd love to help. Thanks for watching. From all of us here at Altitude University, stay safe out there and happy flying.